What's going on YouTube? My name is FG3000. I'm back in the place to be and welcome to Grand Alliance. This is a brand new hero collector that just came out last night and brought to you by Crunchyroll. So if you do want to download the title, I will have the links in the description below. So let's start this off as we always do, starting off with the heroes that you can collect. So here are the heroes that I've collected thus far, but do keep in mind, I have not done any summons whatsoever. I'm saving that for the end of the video. But even with this small sample size, I am quite encouraged by the character design that I've seen thus far outside of the main character Leon here is your quintessential generic main character face with a sword with the red trim with the short hair and the plate bits but not too platey. However, when it comes to the overarching theme of anime characters wearing military and army style uniforms, I really do like it. And it's done quite well in Grand Alliance. It's done so well that even though that all the characters are kind of tied to the shared aesthetic, they still do a good job of kind of making their personalities known. Like this character and this character and this character all look very different and all of their military outfits are quite varied as well. And if we take it a step further, you can take a look at some of these other characters. Once again, they all have this shared aesthetic when it comes to military style, but they all look different and you can still tell the personality of each individual characters. I like this one with a little bit of samurai influence there. We'll keep going, I'll show you a few more here. And of course, like I said, I will be doing a summon towards the end of the video, but I really do think the, the character design in this game is the best part about Grand Alliance. So when it comes to the heroes that you can collect, they did a very, very good job. So. Let's go ahead and jump on over into a combat. Ladies and gentlemen, right now I'm on chapter four, battle one. Um, this is a stamina based game here, so it's gonna cost me 10 stamina to run the stage. Right now I have 153, so you know, early on, just like in most hero collectors, there's gonna be quite a bit of gameplay kind of front loaded um, when it comes to how much stamina that you have. And of course, FG's bringing a full waifu crew to combat. Um, there is an auto battle check mark there that I'll show you what that looks like once we jump into combat. But for all the people that have been subscribed to this channel for any length of time you already know an fg 3000 cardinal sin has already been committed man only three heroes to combat three that's it with as cool as the characters are in this game it's just so limiting to only be able to bring three heroes to combat pvp is a little bit different i'll show you what that looks like but for the majority the massive overwhelming majority of gameplay modes in this game you're only going to be rocking three heroes and i think that's an absolute shame now if you look down at the bottom of each individual characters you'll see some assigned skills as well so in this game your characters do have an element type so for example my clarissa here is dark element but i can also equip her with different skills that have different element types as well so even though she's a dark element type i can equip her with fire skills or light skills or water water skills to kind of change the way she does damage in the combat. And I do quite like that. Now, of course, I know the next question has got to be, all right, FG, what's in the gotcha? Well, the gotcha, of course, is gonna have heroes as well as skills. <laughs> so do keep that in mind. And like I said, I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later in the video. All right, so here we are in combat. Um, as far as auto settings, the game will auto move for you. So it will move you directly to your objective. Um, and then there also is an auto skill feature. The auto skill feature will not do your ultimates, however. So do keep that in mind. Also, the auto move will not move you out of telegraphs. So when it comes to min-maxing the amount of damage and mitigating the amount of damage you take, it's all about trying to get out of the telegraphs and auto move and auto play will not do that for you. So if you find yourself kind of struggling on stages, it's probably because your characters are just sitting in telegraphs and taking a lot of damage. Um, so far, based on the characters I've collected, and of course, like I said earlier, I don't have a lot of them, um, but I have no healers on my team. So these little two health pots you see here, I really have to make those stretch for the entire combat scenario because that's the only healing I have. Um, when it comes to doing ultimates, it's very straightforward. Click on your character's portrait, aim it with a little telegraph, and that is going to be your ultimate attack. So when it comes to like, you know, just visual splendor, when it comes to like big screen filling ultimates and that type of thing, if you're like me and that's a big part of what you like about hero collectors, having like really like just screen filling ultimates, not really gonna be that type of game at all. Really, the, the fun of the combat comes from just kind of moving your characters in and out of telegraphs and kind of min-maxing your damage there. So let's go ahead and do another little combat scenario here so I can show you a little bit more of the gameplay. Move my characters around, kind of group everyone up. You can kind of play it, I don't wanna say Diablo style, but you know how it is when it comes to like action RPGs, kind of rounding up a bunch of your enemies into like a big, big nice little AOE and then DPS them down. Use a little bit of healing potions there to kind of keep our our team upright. 
Um, if you die, of course, you're not gonna get three stars, so that's very important for me at least, but um, this game does not have any type of auto repeat or any type of quality of life, no skip tickets. So that's an issue um, because there are gonna be some stages that you do need to grind out because the drop rates are for the lack of a better word, pitiful. Like the drop rates in some of the stages are just really, really low. So having to be tied to your phone, hitting, you know, play the battle again, play the battle again, play the battle again, can get a little tedious. I would love for them to add some type of quality of life. I don't see why here in 2020, um, game companies don't understand the value of putting, you know, really decent quality of life in their, in their game. Um, Cause that, in my opinion, just increases the longevity of the title. So there you go, that is combat here in the world of Grand Alliance. I just hit a nice little level up there, increase my stamina, rinse and repeat on. So that is that, and you saw that little replay button there. I can replay the stage, so as long as I'm, you know, kind of close to my phone, I can replay the stage over and over and over again. Um, but like I said, there is no automated process when it comes to that. Um, so that is your campaign. Um, that's the easy difficulty right there. Um, but of course, as you complete chapters, you can go back and do some of the uh, uh, previous chapters on harder difficulties, as you guys can see. So that's the story, that is the campaign. Um, in addition to that, you also have a daily resource grind here, literally called Resource Quest. Um, so a way for you to uh, farm gold, um, EXP books, treasure, which I'm gonna talk about here in a second, and then different types of upgrade materials depending on the class. So tanks, um, mages, kind of warriors, and then like snipers, ranged characters. Now here's one of my issues with some of the daily resource grinds in the game thus far. So if you wanna kind of level up some of your characters, there is a massive jump in the power level requirement. So the first training stage only requires a battle rating, a battle rating of 8,700, but the next one is 95,000. <laughs> what? So you find yourself in this position where you wanna level up your characters, but you're forced to run this really easy, fast training stage that barely drops anything. So I, I don't like that at all. Think about any hero collector that you guys currently play. Imagine only being able to farm the easiest upon easiest EXP stage, right? And the only other option is like a really, really, really hard one. Like it just makes it so that trying to level up your characters is just way more tedious than it needs to be. Yeah, you can auto it, but like I said earlier, there is no auto repeat. I just ran that stage. I got one EXP ticket, just one. Just one. So I don't like that. If I want to, I wish there were just a couple of stages in between this. Where is the medium difficulty stage here? So if we go back over here to Expedition, there's another gameplay mode called Battlefront. And the way Battlefront works, once you enter a Battlefront, you're locked in for a season. So this season is going to reset in four days. And once you begin this Battlefront, all of your hero stats are locked until the next reset. So what you're trying to do, you're trying to go through as many waves as you possibly can while trying to maintain your HP. And as you guys can see here there are no health pots in this gameplay mode um so this is going to reward you for having kind of you know a larger roster that way if someone dies you can kind of switch them in and out and it's also going to reward you for actually playing the game to make sure that you're not standing in telegraphs and taking unnecessary damage that you don't really need to take and that's basically how that works so go in just another wave here and as you guys just saw my clarissa still has the same hp that she had in the previous match so once again Kind of, ah, oh, these range ones kind of screw that over. Get out a little telegraphs there. I'm taking a ton of damage for no good reason. <laughs> but like, yeah, like I said, having strong units or having a really large roster so you can switch in and out is gonna be a very big um, advantage in that gameplay mode. So that is gonna be your battlefront. So one gameplay mode that I kind of glossed over was the treasure hunt. So if you do treasure hunts, you can get special chests. Now this is something that I was hoping was not a thing in games anymore. A lot of older games have started to kind of take these things out and a lot of newer games don't even do this system anymore. But for whatever reason, Grand Alliance has this archaic chess system where basically as you get chess you put them in this little ui here and then over a period of multiple hours the chess will unlock or you can spend gems to unlock it faster i hate these systems so much like they are i don't like these systems at all they have no place in a game like this the only reason why they existed in games in the first place was for games like clash royale for example games that didn't have stamina it was a way to kind of limit 
player's gameplay in a sense, but this game already has stamina. There's no reason to have a chest system in the game in addition to that. But here you are, chest system. You can only unlock one chest at a time, so they don't even have simultaneous unlocking, which if you're gonna do a chest system like this, at least have simultaneous unlocking. That way all of your chests are ticking down at the same time, but that's not the case here. So if you get like a five hour chest, all your other chests have to sit there and wait until that five hours is up, and then you unlock the next chest, and then the next chest, and it's just annoying. I don't like it at all. All right, so jumping over to the next gameplay mode, which is going to be Grand Arena. This is going to be your PvP. So this actually gives you an opportunity to use more than three characters. So this is going to be wave-based PvP. So as you guys can see, you're going to put three heroes in wave one, two, and three. The same thing is going to apply to your enemy as well. And basically on a timer, your second wave and your third wave are going to come out and do some fighting for you. So right now, here's my wave one going against his wave one. And then here in a couple seconds, you see wave two is on their way. They're gonna start fighting. And then here comes my wave two here in a couple of seconds. There you go. And that's basically how PVP works. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's just not visually stimulating for me. I really do like the 2D art. I do love the 2D live art that this game has. But once I get into combat, once I start doing attacks, I really, I don't really have anything that kind of grips me visually here in Grand Alliance. Um, and all the gameplay modes are pretty substandard when it comes to the genre. So it's really not enough to capture my attention long term, in my opinion. But of course, I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section below. So if we go over here to our base, there's a couple other things here. Um, you have scouting, which is going to be your tried and true dispatch mode. Um, send your heroes out on the mission. They're going to come back six, eight hours. They're going to bring you back goodies. Nothing too special there. Um, there's also a tavern where heroes are going to be here on kind of a rotation so if there's a hero that you really really like like this character for example you can recruit her flat out by using your in-game currency or i can recruit another duplicate of one of my characters that i already have or either one of these characters here so i do like this tavern feature it reduces some of the rng that's accompanied by you know just straight up gotchas um if we go over here to the gotcha um, there are premium summons here. There's a resource summon here, which is kind of ad based, and there are going to be two raid up banners as well. I'm just going to go ahead and roll on the premium banner. I don't really care which heroes I get, and I'll show you what the full summoning animation looks like. So um, there goes the skill. Once again, I'll show you what that looks like once we get our ourselves a new hero, hopefully. And as you guys can see, there are different rarity tiers for individual skills. So there's gonna be two star skills, three star skills, four star skills, et cetera, et cetera. As you get duplicates, you can make the skills even stronger as well. And like I said earlier, all of these skills have different element types associated with them as well. And they also have character classes that they are restricted to. So summoning animation, not too great. Um, we got ourselves a duplicate of Leon, great. My favorite character. <laughs> How exciting. Um, let's do some more pulls here. Let's see if we can get a new character. Because I like to show off the upgrade process when it comes to new characters. Not characters I already have. Are we going to get lucky? Lots of skills here. All right. So we got ourselves a character. I'm going to go ahead and pull one more. Or actually, I'm just going to burn out all my currency. Let's do rapid fire here. Let's see what else we can get. Oh, Rose. All right. Fire Gunner. I do like Rose here. Do we have any more currency? All right, so we're out of currency. So let's go ahead and use Rose as an example. She's a three-star character, fire gunner. So her base element type is gonna be fire. So her skill and her ultimate are both gonna be fire-based. However, when it comes to bringing her into combat, I do have a little bit of flexibility on what I wanna bring. So I have this, what, this five-star um, forest skill called Decimating Shot, which is gonna do 960 earth damage to a target in a line. So I can go ahead and equip that. So now my fire character whose base skill and base ultimate or fire has the ability to do forest damage or earth damage or whatever i can also do a freezing shot here as well so i do like that flexibility it allows you to basically build your team around characters you like and kind of offset your strengths and weaknesses with these additional skills so i like the system quite a bit to be honest so if we go back over here to manage pretty straightforward there's going to be different skins in this game looks like rose doesn't have any options when it comes to applying exp you get these little exp 
EXP tickets. So as you guys just saw there, that one EXP ticket was only able to give a level one five levels. So of course, the stronger and higher you get, those EXP tickets are gonna be less and less relevant as you move along. You can also tier up your character by using in-game resources. So the daily resource grind for Gunner and then completing stages on harder difficulties is gonna allow you to drop these two resources here. Those will allow you to tier up your character. Um, there is a potential system, which is kind of interesting. Um, so check this out. As you level up, you will unlock slots here. So right now I unlocked a slot that gave me 2.9% um, penetration. Now, if I don't like that penetration stat, I can reroll that, or I can just continue to level up my character because as you guys can see, level 10, 15, 20, 45, 40, et cetera, et cetera. As I get higher and higher leveled, I get to unlock more and more of these slots here, which will allow me to get more and more passive bonuses. And depending on how much I wanna reroll those passive bonuses, I can really kind of min max my character's potential based on what I'm trying to do with that character. And then last but not least, there is enhancements, and this is what you're gonna be using your duplicates for. So um, that's gonna increase your HP, your armor, and your damage um, by the duplicates that you pull out of the gotcha. Um, you can also equip each individual character with a full little armor set, weapons, gloves, boots, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there is no cost for unequipping your gear, so if you wanna unequip gear, you can absolutely do that. Um, when it comes to uh, upgrading your individual gear, um, it's gonna require two different resources. One resource that you get from disassembling and selling fodder gear, and then of course, good old fashioned gold. The more you upgrade, the lower your percent chance goes by 10% each one. Um, and you also have this little lame animation that goes along with it, faster than most games, but still unnecessary. Um, but that is, gonna be the game ladies and gentlemen a nice little look at a grand alliance um overall like i said my favorite part about the game is gonna be the heroes that you can collect um and the combat believe it or not once you start playing it at higher levels it's not as bad as it looks when you first start the game when you first start the game it feels like it's kind of like meh um but once you get a little bit higher levels once you get to the higher chapters when just landing in one telegraph can mean the end of a good run the combat gets a little bit more involved but i really wish that number one it was a little bit more visually exciting the animations the little chibi characters the ultimates are not really that awe-inspiring so even though i like the the core of the combat system the visuals of the combat system kind of lit that down unfortunately and that will do it ladies and gentlemen just a nice quick look at grand alliance once again my name is ft3000 i thank you a ton for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one later